Hi guys, I'm EVM and welcome back. This video is basically a guide to an all level approved electric vehicle home charge point. Now it's not a complicated process, it's not a difficult one, but there are a few things which I think are worth knowing about beforehand so you don't end up getting any potential delays. Because ultimately, let's face it, the point is to get the charge point installed before the car arrives, not after. Now, I'm no electrician, so I've had to enlist the help of the company that have just literally changed my home charge point for a new smart home charge point. They are called Smart Home Charge. I will put the link to their website in the description below this video, and I have no problems at all recommending them. They are not paying me for this mention, but without them, this video would not be possible. They operate nationwide, and as I said, I had a pretty much flawless installation, although they did say they were going to turn up at 10 o'clock, and turned up at 10.03. So if you're new to the EV game and you need a charge point, then please do check out smarthomecharge.co.uk. Now, before I show you my installation and have a look outside as to where the cable runner's gone, let me just tell you exactly what you're getting installed here because a few people, certainly if you believe some mainstream media daily mail uh, people, uh, it's almost like your face will melt if you get too close to the charger or some people seem to think you're getting a small nuclear reactor attached to the side of your house. I promise you, you're not. It's very safe. I've had one for nearly five years now and ultimately, do you really think they'd allow people to install something that would melt the wiring in your house. As far as the internal wiring of your house goes, it doesn't actually use it at all. It bypasses that completely. So you really don't have anything to worry about on an electrical safety grounds. And in fact, let's put this into context. A typical charger for an EV is 32 amp and around seven kilowatts. I've just had a very quick on look online and electric showers, which a lot of people have installed, seem to range from six to about 11 kilowatts. Now, yes, of course, the EV charger will be on for longer, but that just puts it into context exactly what you're getting installed outside. There's nothing bad about it. Your face genuinely won't melt if you get too close to it whilst the car is charging. And yes, you can use it in the rain. They have thought about this. Installing something which cannot be operated in the rain in the UK would be idiotic. So no problems with the weather, no problems with your house installation. Anyone that installs this, especially if they are all lever approved, will only do so in a very safe manner. And of course, to get the OLEV grant, whoever you use has to be all lever approved, like Smart Home Charge. Right, now before I go out and show you the physical side of this installation, let me tell you what sort of details you'll need to fill in the various forms to get the OLEV grant. Now I've managed to swipe this nice little graphic from Smart Home Charge, so uh, I don't have to bother creating one for that. For the OLEV checklist, you will need your name, email and telephone number. They'll need to know the make and model of the electric car that you're getting the charge point for, of course, and they will need the VRN or VIN number. So that's basically the car's registration or its VIN number. If you're buying a brand new car, and of course it's not been delivered yet, then you will probably get to find that out a few weeks before delivery. So make sure the dealer that you're buying the car from is aware that you need those details as soon as they know those details. Then you've got them, whether you need them now or not, you have them in front of you. You also need the estimated delivery date and order agreement if it is a brand new car that hasn't arrived yet. The OLEV grant is applicable to used EVs, leased EVs, cash buys and financed cars. So pretty much anyone that buys an electric car. One last thing you will need is your 13 digit MPAN number or meter point administration number. This should be on your electricity bill. If you're struggling finding it, then just ring up your electricity supplier and ask them. Right, now if you have a driveway like this one, it's quite straightforward because you do need off street parking to be eligible for the OLEV grant. If you have a parking bay like this, which is yours, but is not physically attached to your house, then you are still allowed to claim on the OLEV grant. On the gov.uk website, it's got the customer guidance for the electric vehicle home charge scheme. I will put the link to that in the description below. In relation to if you have a parking bay as opposed to a driveway, it states this. The customer's designated private off-street parking must be associated to the property of the customer. Where the link between the off-street parking and the customer's property is unclear, we may require additional evidence such as the customer's property records. 
Once you've got all these details, uh, that's pretty much it really. You've got everything you need for the entire process and when the OLEV approved installer asks for them, you just have to fill it in basically. So get that done, get that out of the way and then we can move on to the physical installation outside. Now the first place to start is with the main fuse coming into the house. For me, that is next to my energy meter, my electricity meter of course, and I imagine it is for you as well. This is my energy meter and here, you can just see where it says 100A is my main fuse coming into the house. That basically means I have a 100 amp fuse. Now, if like myself, you have a 100 amp fuse coming into the house, then 99 times out of 100, you'll have no problems at all. Of course, whoever your charge point installer does will ultimately tell you whether anything needs to happen to this, but you can kind of preempt a bit of it. So for example, if you've got a at the other end, a, a, let's say a 60 amp fuse coming into your house, then there's a fair chance that that will need upgrading before the charge point can be installed. You'll be getting a 32 amp charger installed, and if you've only got 60 coming in, you, again, you, you're gonna likely need that upgrading. If you are in that position where you do need a new main fuse, then either the charge point installers themselves, some of those can take uh, this whole process for you and take it out of your hands, like Smart Home Charge do, for example, or you would have to contact your energy supplier and then go from there. You may even need to contact your DNO or distribution network operator to get the whole process finished. I live in Yorkshire, so my DNO is the Northern Power Grid. A quick Google will be able to tell you who that is, but the starting point should be your energy supplier. However, don't do anything until the charge point installers have confirmed that you do actually need an upgrade. Now, the reason I'm mentioning this now is so you can tell the charge point installers at the earliest opportunity to get this process moving. The people I've spoken to that have had this done is taken sometimes less than a week. Some have taken up to a month. I mean, you're in the hands potentially of your energy supplier. So we all know how well that can go sometimes. Either way, go and check it and then at least you know what fuse you've got. If you've got 100 amp, as I said, you're probably gonna be all right. Now let's talk about the reason why of why I'm stood in my garage. This, of course, is my consumer unit, or as I like to call it, the fuse box. You can see the separate fuse here that was installed just for my charger. If you're getting your charge point installed now onwards, then it's likely you'll have something similar, but of course, everybody's installation is different. Now, if we look at this cable here, this big thick one running down that I've uh, actually painted so it matches the wall, that's, in, that's important. That is what basically goes from the consumer unit area to wherever your charge point will be located outside. Assuming, of course, you're getting it installed outside and not in the garage. If you want your charge point in your drive and your drive is the other side of this wall, nice and easy. Drill a hole in, they're pretty much done. It's, 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 it's an easy installation. If you have your drive at the other side of the house to the consumer unit, then that cable somehow has to find its way around your house or through your house or under your house or however it needs to get there. But either way, a cable needs to get from there to the charge point. Now, of course, the charge point installers will help you through this whole process, tell you what is possible, tell you what isn't possible. But it is something which I put some thought into beforehand because mine is kind of over there, which I'll show you in a second, because I wanted the cable to be, to be hidden. I didn't want it just going over the front of my house, over the doorway or anything like that. So I thought, well, I want it to go that way. Let me find out if that's possible when they arrive. If you have that sort of complicated cable run anyway, then it may increase the installation cost, of course, whoever's installing it, because A, they're using a lot more cable, and B, it will take more time to get it from A to B. Now this leads into where you put the charge point on the driveway itself. If you always reverse into your driveway and the charge point is on the front of the car, then you need to think, well, okay, then uh, where shall I put the charger? Shall I put it at this side of the drive? Shall I put it at that side of the drive? If you sometimes park your car that way or that way or that way, then the cable has to reach wherever the charge point is on the car at all times. So put some effort into thinking about where it's gonna go. If you've just got a nice small drive and it's gonna go against the other wall, it's nice and easy. If you've got a long drive or you've got a couple of cars and you think, well, we have to make sure the EV is always at the front, unless we put the charge point in the middle of the drive and then it doesn't matter where it goes. I, for example, have put mine in the position where it's in the middle of two places the car can go. So whichever part of the drive I park into, I can reach my charging port on the car. Now, assuming it's going to stop raining, let's have a look at my physical charge point installation so I can show you the, char the, the cable run that was done nearly five years ago for me now. Uh, and as I said, I wanted the cable 
as hidden as possible so I didn't have it well, plastered all over the front of my house basically. Right, well you can see the cable going down from the consumer unit there, it goes all along here and you can just see the cable there. From that point it comes out of the house here into this drainage ditch past the garage itself, past the front door and then comes out here so we get to the charge point itself. My only other option was basically to come out of the wall over to the top of the garage along there past the front door around the outside here and then to the charge point there. That is something I didn't want because the cable would have, well, it would have looked quite ugly and, you know, aesthetics do matter to people. So that's why it's important to think about how the cable may get to where you want the charge point. In relation to the position of the charge point, if I park here or there or even in that garage, that charge cable can reach the car. So that's why it's important to think about where you want to put it. Let's imagine, for example, you wanted to put the charge point on that wall. You think, well, okay, well, how are we going to get the cable from there all the way uh, up there and down there? Should, should I go along the driveway? Should I go through that bit and along the wall? Hmm, bit of thought needed, really. Now, as you can see, there are two cables coming out of the charge point. This one here is basically an earthing rod. Now, for that, I'm going to explain inside the garage because it's freezing. Now that cable went to an earthing point, which typically connects to one of these, which is a very, very long earthing rod, like a long javelin. And that can go sometimes a few meters into the ground. Now the reason I mentioned this isn't to complicate things, but ultimately it's easier to stick something like this into let's say a flower bed than it is a tarmac or concrete driveway. And although it is possible to stick it into a hard surface, it is of course much easier to do it somewhere soft. So let's imagine you have a flower bed two or three meters away from where your charge point will be located. A cable will then need to be run from that charge point to that flower bed. So just have a bit of a think about how you will get the cable or how you would like the cable to be run and maybe hidden to go from the charger to the soft bit of ground. Now, as I've said, every installation is different and not everyone will need something like this installing only your charge point installer will be able to tell you that once they've surveyed the, uh, your property basically. So rely on their guidance. This is a guide to the whole process, but as I said, everyone is different. So it's not specific enough to each person's individual needs. So that's pretty much it really as far as the physical install goes, where the charge point will be located, how you might get a cable from there to the charge point and how you may get a cable from the charge point to the soft bit of ground if you do need one of these. Now, Smart Home Charge may not like me saying this, but remember, you are the customer. What the installer thinks is the easiest way might not necessarily be the best way for yourself. You might want it hidden, as I did, rather than it just going clean across the front of your house. People are bothered about aesthetics. It's, it's just natural. So if you say, no, no, I want it doing that way, then, then you know, stick to your guns. Assuming there's no safety reason, to, to not run it that way, then, then, you know, get it done the way you want. That's why I'm saying this. Think about where you want it to go. The easiest way isn't necessarily the best way. Right, now I'm gonna go back to the office because my hands are freezing in this garage uh, and we just need to talk about whether or not you go for a tethered or untethered charger. Uh, so yeah, I'm going back upstairs now. Oh, oh, I tell you, people don't know the hardships that us YouTubers have to go through. I mean, look, my, my hands are freezing. I'm gonna have to moisturize and everything now. Right, now onto whether or not you should pick a tethered or untethered charger. I always believe, and this is the one I have, that a tethered charger is massively more convenient. The basic difference is you can get a charge point that just has a socket, so you use your own cable to plug into like a public charger, or a tethered one, which has basically got a cable coming out of the charger that you just pick up the, the, the gun, as it were, and, and plug it into the car. Now, this effectively gives you an extra cable because you don't have to use the cable that comes with the car. That is one benefit, but the other one is not having to go into your boot or garage or wherever you keep it every time you want to plug the car in at night. That is why I will always go for a tethered charger. Now, in some situations, you wouldn't be able to go for a tethered charger. For example, some of the older cars, like the first generation Nissan Leaf, use a Type 1 cable, 
and pretty much everything these days uses a type 2. So if you have a regular visitor, for example, that needs type 1 and you have type 2, then a socketed non-tethered charger is the best solution. So more than one car or different type of car can use the same charger. I suppose another one is that a tethered charger, as it comes with a usually five meter cable in itself, they are often a little bit more expensive as well. But for me, it is worth every penny because not only again, do you effectively get an extra cable for your car, it means you don't have to go into the boot or the, the front or wherever to get the charging cable out every time you get home. I just literally go into my drive, get out, pick the cable up and plug it straight in to the car. I don't have to plug it into the charge point and the car. Right, well, that's pretty much it, really. Uh, once again, thank you to Smart Home Charge for providing me with the information I needed to finish this guide. Uh, if you are thinking about getting an EV charger, then do please look at their website, smarthomecharge.co.uk. And um, that's pretty much it. Um, let me know if you've had any, any uh, fun installations. If you've already got one and you had a nightmare install, then please do tell me in the comments. Uh, sounds a bit sadistic, that, but I always like to hear people's different experiences. Right, as always, thank you for watching. Uh, I'll see you soon. And please do subscribe. Nearly 80% of the viewers I get aren't subscribed to the channel. So let's try and change that, shall we? Uh, thanks for watching again. Uh, I'll see you soon.